All right, we got GED language arts level four practice test. So this is the most difficult practice test uh, for the GED language arts. There are four levels that we offer here. And so there are level one, two, and three practice tests as well on YouTube. So if you haven't yet, I would recommend checking those out. So on this one, we have 10 questions that we'll go through. They are all in the description, uh, along with the uh, multiple choice uh, answers. So I recommend going through those, take the test, and then when you're done, then watch the video uh, and then see how you did. And if there are any concepts that you need to be more familiar with, then that's the time to uh, familiarize yourself with those concepts. So having said that, uh, a quick comment on your scores on this. Uh, so you need a 145, um, that's the number to pass each of the subject areas. So in this case, the subject area is language arts. Uh, 145 basically is about 65% or so. Um, so that's kind of like your bottom line number to pass that you're looking at. Uh, so these questions are a little bit more difficult, I would say, uh, than some of the others. So if you're at six or seven out of 10, like you're probably right somewhere around that line. Uh, if you're thinking about college, uh, and interested in a college application process, uh, having a higher score will help you. Um, so trying to get your overall score up to more like around 80% or so, um, is really what you would be shooting for. So anyway, that's just something to keep in mind uh, as far as other ways to help. Uh, we do have also videos um, with links to them at the bottom that go more specifically and a little bit more in depth with a few more examples to any of these subject areas. So that can be useful. And we do have a mobile app. So I would recommend taking a look at that. It's helped uh, thousands of people with the GED. Okay, let's get started. Which of the following sentences has an incorrect Subject verb agreement. Yeah, where's my pen at here? Okay. Uh, so it says each of you are responsible for doing your chores. Each of you is responsible for doing your chores. Everyone has finished their chores. Neither of the two assignments is complete. Okay. So when you're talking about subject verb agreement, right? Um, so each everyone and everybody are singular and therefore require singular verbs which means is would be a singular verb are is not are is plural are is plural the pronouns neither and either are singular and also require singular verbs even though they seem to be referring to two things okay so that's that can be confusing right so we have each twice We have everyone, and we have neither. Okay, and if we were to summarize, we said each, everyone, and everybody are singular and require, therefore, singular verbs, and neither is singular. Okay, so let's look at the verbs. Each of you are, that's plural. Okay, so this one is wrong. Let's go and look at, see if the other ones, hopefully there aren't two that are wrong. That would be confusing. Each of you is, good. Each and is are both singular. Everyone and there. And then finally, neither and is. Okay, so B, C, and D look good. A does not look good. Okay, so because we have each and are, that is incorrect subject verb agreement. If, um, like, so immediately this is probably, uh, it's more stuff that people get wrong, uh, both as far as uh, people who have interacted with our app, we can see how they answer. And so people miss this type of question quite a bit. Uh, and I can just tell you also, as far as the way that people write, like in emails and things like that, is they get this wrong a lot also. So, um, if this is a struggle, there uh, is a section of the app that really just goes over subject verb agreement. And in a lot of cases, it's just doing a bunch of uh, practice questions and getting more comfortable with it. Uh, and one is it'll help your score 
but two is it will help you in your writing, right? Uh, which can be very important, right? So if you're if you're working somewhere and you know you're writing an email to your boss and you're hoping to get a promotion, is how intelligent you appear when in your writing. It's a big deal. Right. Um, so you might not care, but they might care. Right. And that might be how they evaluate you or part of the way in which they evaluate you. Um, so being able to know this stuff is significant. All right. Which of the following uses the word attribute as a verb? OK, so we'll go through our answers. Empathy is an important attribute in therapists. The most important attribute in her choice of schools was academic rigor. I attribute my success to hard work. Health insurance was an important attribute of the employment contract. Okay, so when, and so the question was attribute as a verb, right? So when attribute is a noun, it is a quality or feature of somebody or something. When it's a verb, attribute means to say or believe that something is the result of a particular thing. You can also sound out the word and know which one is unlike the others. So I attribute my success to hard work. Then let's answer right here. I attribute my success to hard work when it's a verb. Attribute, again, just repeating myself, means to say or believe that something is the result of a particular thing, right? And here they're saying they're attributing success to hard work. And so because of that, we go with answer choice C. Another tricky one, though. Um, I should have gone to class this morning. Should and have are, okay, and then knowing about these different types of verbs. So again, level four is a little bit harder. There's no question about it. Um, so let's go over these. So in this sense, gone is the main verb, while should and have are helping verbs. Okay, so how do we know that? That's the answer. Helping verbs assist the main verb in getting the tense correct. Linking verbs, on the other hand, are verbs that describe the subject, such as is, feel, look, and so on. Action verbs, not surprisingly, describe an action, such as run or hit. So anyway, in this case, helping verbs. Okay, and then a, a pronoun question. Uh, what is the pronoun in the following statement? Matt and Victoria bought a very nice house. It was so beautiful. Okay, so just making sure that we have this info down. So a pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. Okay, that's what a pronoun is. Okay, so when we look at Matt and Vic Victoria, so those are nouns. Okay, house, noun. It, so when we look at the word it, what is it talking about? Matt and Victoria bought a very nice house. So it is talking about that house, right? Okay, so it is replacing house, right? And so we just have pronouns so that we don't have to say very nice house five different times in the paragraph, right? Um, so it is talking about the house and therefore is the pronoun beautiful is not a pronoun. Okay, women drive me crazy. In the preceding sentence, what are women? Okay, and so we should be able to eliminate those pronouns, really just like right off the bat. Right, remembering that a pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. Women, that is not a replacement for a noun, women are nouns. Okay. So a common, but as far as the difference between a common noun and a proper noun, so a common noun is more general, such as women. A proper noun is more specific, such as an actual woman. Um, to give you some info on the other two answer choices, though, a subject pronoun replaces the subject, such as the word she. An object pronoun replaces the object of the verb, such as him. Okay, so that's really detailed. Um, but for our purposes, for this question, women, 
the common noun. If it said, Julia drives me crazy, so that's the specific woman, then proper noun. All right, we're halfway home. It's question six. Which sentence is grammatically incorrect? So we have Rebecca was pretty tired, comma, and she was hungry from the long hike. And just making sure, a lot of times they'll put the incorrect in caps for us, but we're looking for incorrect, right? We don't want to go about this thinking we were looking for grammatically correct because we just rushed through the question. So we thought we knew what it said. Okay. Rebecca was pretty tired, comma, and she was hungry from the long walk. Same exact sentence. Rebecca was pretty tired and she was hungry from the long walk, but this time no comma. Rebecca was tired, hungry, and sunburned. So there we have some parallelism going. Looks pretty good. And then just Rebecca was tired. Okay, so which one of these is wrong? So we never put a comma between two words or phrases joined by the word and. There should not be a comma between the words tired and and in answer choice A. Okay, so right here. And then the and, this is a problem. Okay, so because of that, that is incorrect, where answer choice B, which just doesn't have the comma, is correct. Which sentence uses correct capitalization? Okay, so this one, so we have a mayor example in, in each of these questions. Okay, so our basic rules are we not capitalize a title such as mayor, unless it refers to a specific person, okay? But if it does refer to a specific person, then we do capitalize it. So we can see an answer choice A, where it says Mayor Dinkins right here. That should be capital M. Yeah, stop it. Okay, that should be capital M. So answer choice A we don't like. So, all right, answer choice B, it has capitalized mayor where it says the mayor was very arrogant, but it's not a specific mayor, right? So we don't care for that one either. Answer choice C, the mayor and his staff met for several hours. Okay, so there they're not talking about a specific mayor um, that we're familiar with at least. Um, and so because of that, we like that answer. I said, I hate you, Mayor, as well as your poorly thought out policies. On answer choice D, in direct speaking, which is what we have in answer choice D, we do need to capitalize Mayor. So we don't like that one either. Okay. Direct speaking, even we capitalize that title. Okay. And so there we go. Answer choice C for question seven. Okay. Then we want to pick the correct sentence here where it says the pizza is hers. Then we have a few different things like we have an apostrophe at the end of the S between the R and the S and also no apostrophe. So how do we know what to do here? So the first thing we want to know is that this is a possessive sentence. Possessive sentence shows ownership, right? She's the owner of the pizza. With possessive sentences, nouns have an apostrophe and pronouns do not. Okay. Again, let me say that one more time. Nouns have an apostrophe, pronouns do not. So hers is a pronoun, right? So because of that, pronouns don't have an apostrophe, so that's the one we like. And our choices A and B, right, are both pronouns with an apostrophe, and that makes it incorrect. So hers is a pronoun, as opposed to, so words like dogs and women's would have an apostrophe because they are nouns and not pronouns. What about these? My attorney's fees are ridiculous with different, different types of apostrophe options, huh? So again, possessive nouns show ownership. Plural nouns are more than one of something. 
plural possessive nouns show both ownership and more than one of something. If a noun shows possession and ends with an S, then we mustn't add an apostrophe at the end. Let me restate that. If a noun is both possessive and plural, we add an apostrophe. Okay, and so what that means is that this answer choice C, where it has attorneys written like that, okay, uh, because it's a noun and it's both possessive and plural, we add that apostrophe at the end. So it is rare. We don't see the apostrophe at the end all that often, but that is the rule, and it could easily show up. So it's one to know. Although, again, one of the harder GED language arts questions. And then finally, here we are at question 10, which sentence is written correctly? And we have her friends, new house is beautiful, and again, some more apostrophe type options. Okay, so friend is a singular noun. We add the apostrophe and the S to make it possessive. So we need to add an apostrophe and an S to it. So which answer has that? An apostrophe and then an S? We see that right there. Answer choice B. Okay, so definitely the most challenging practice test, I would say. And it should be because it's level four. Uh, so I hope you did well. If some of this stuff uh, was more challenging, uh, I think the steps that I would certainly go through are look at the videos that we will link to. Those will help with some more examples. But the best thing you can do is getting a lot of practice at this, getting a lot of feedback. And the best thing we can offer you is to go through the app. It's you know fairly interactive and engaging. And as you're answering, is it will also be able to recognize where your knowledge gaps are. Um, what short videos are the best for you to watch, and it will recommend those while you're using the app, so that's kind of useful too. All right, thanks guys.